So we've added some products. We've looked at the various nuances of adding individual products. We've uh, then also made menu items, submenu items, and all of that. Uh, we'll talk about variations next time because they're not hard, but they're complicated. And complicated isn't necessarily hard. Complicated is just many steps, perhaps. So next time we'll talk about variations because I want to sell variations of cookies. Not one cookie at a time, but a minimum of three or maybe six or twelve variations. But before we wrap it up, I want to look at coupons. Let's uh, hover over products and go to coupons. So you'll be able to manage your coupons here, which are active, inactive, all of them at once. There's no coupons yet. So notice at the top, under coupons, we have add coupon. Click add coupon. What's its code? The code entered to receive the discount. What's the discount? And what discount type and so forth. See, we've got a lot of great details that we can work with, but let's start from the top. Coupon code. So you see this all the time. Use this coupon code on checkout to get this percent off. So let's just say uh, we'll, make a, we'll make a coupon call called Save Me 10. This is going to save $10 percent, whatever. So when someone checks out, there will be a box that says, Please enter coupon code. Coupon code Save Me 10. The discount amount. Um, I I have to double check the documentation, but I believe it has to be. Well, there is a video. What's that? Oh, okay, yes, discount type. They should have put it backwards to choose one than the other. So fixed amount, percentage, or free shipping. So if you use a specific code, then you can get some free shipping. But here, then, if we say, okay, this is going to be a percent, percentage. You can select percentage, and the number that you put there will be the amount, or it's a fixed amount. So let's say save me 10. We'll save me $10, let's say. So 10, 0, 0. It'll be saving a fixed amount, $10, or 10%. When does it start and end? If it's empty, then there's no expiration. So obviously you have to be careful because maybe you thought you wanted to give this coupon for a certain amount of the year, a certain time of the year, and then you never deactivated it and someone can still get that 10% those $10 off whenever when we click add coupon do we want it to be active at this point if you turn that off then you want to make sure you set a start and end date so I'm gonna say starting Tuesday and then ending Sunday but not active until Tuesday or active until now, whatever. So you can customize it as much as you want. This is going to be active for about a week as soon as I activate it. It'll keep track of if it's been used or not. Probably you want them only to, you, you want them to only use this one at a time or they're going to run you into the poorhouse. But you can turn that on or off. Yes. Um, uh, it would be, I believe it's really that one coupon will be used once. Okay. So it could be, you know, a one-off coupon that you give in your newsletter, you know, the first time buyer. Mm -hmm. um, as part of a, you know, an email campaign, thank you for subscribing to our newsletter, use this coupon. So that can only be used once. If I was using this in a much like larger campaign on the on the on Twitter, let's say, then I wouldn't want that one because it would completely deactivate this coupon. For everybody else. For everybody else, yeah. It would be the full. It would be the whole numbers because point one would be you know point one percent um, of a percentage point. So it's the full. It's the 
full numbers, 10, 0, 0, for 10 percent. This coupon affects each product at checkout or individuals based on conditions, item name, item quantity, etc. So let's say that coupon only applies to certain products. So if I say the item name is equal to cookie, now that means I have to have a product called cookie. But actually I want it to pl apply to contains cookie, chocolate chip cookie, uh, raisin cookie, oatmeal cookie. Save 10 percent, save ten dollars on any cookie if the item name contains that. Equals is going to be very specific and it might not and it might be too specific to actually be useful to people. So it can be based on item name, the quantity, total quantity, subtotal. If you don't want to specify it by product, then just activate the option up here. This coupon affects each product at checkout. 10% off. 10% off everything. You could go further, such as subtotal amount is greater than 25. The $10 coupon will only kick in when it's at least $25 of sales. If a person is only buying $3 worth of items and they're using a $10 coupon, then it won't apply. I'm going to click Add Coupon, and again, if I made a mistake, you can just hover over the coupon to edit or delete. Or deactivate so that it's no longer active. So coupons are a great way to entice more people to purchase. They're relatively straightforward to set up here. They're all managed within the coupons screen. And we saw that we can create different rules to have them apply. We can get pretty specific because I believe we can add here multiple, yes, we can add multiple rules. If it's, if this is worth, if whatever they're buying is more than $25 and or, and the subtotal is less than $99, then within that range this coupon applies. So both of these things have to happen in order for this coupon to work. We can do or to either of those, but then again, this the logic of all of this could be tricky. The thing though is that you can uh, create as many as you want. You can uh, how do you actually use them and share them? This is really more where then social media is going to come in. Having a Twitter account, for example, and then I have my followers and I tweet, and, and, I'm, and I'm saying, sale this week, use this coupon. So I tweet it, all my 500 followers see it, I could potentially get more people buying my stuff, perhaps whenever I tweet something, you know, a new product for sale. Out of my 500 followers, only 20 buy it, let's say. But then if I attach a coupon, maybe I could get 200 to buy. Yes, I am, I am losing a little bit of money with a coupon, but economies of scale hopefully uh, get, give me back returns better than what I'm spending my return on investment. So this could, be, this could have many nuances to see how it really works, but if you're a savvy business, a business person, then you could really make them work well. As I said, we'll talk about variations next time because they need a little bit of setup. They can be kind of confusing. So we'll finish the main idea, the main lecture at the moment because we talked about adding products, categories and tags, and coupons. We still have variations to talk about, and then we'll have more things to talk about regarding the shop um, we can do next time. So we'll do one more time a backup of the site. and.
when we come back next time for practice, you'll need to resurrect your site on your own first. Um, that'll be next time. So let's uh, back up our site again. I'm going to go over to the duplicator screen. I don't have any packages at the moment, so I will create a new package. And I'll add a note. So I'll write here, completed, added products. What were, the, what were the tasks that we completed today? We added products, added tags, added categories, added menu item, and coupon. And then to do, what's um, What's pending to do? Variations. Most likely you'll have to delete the zip file that's in the www folder. So I'm going to click next. And then I'll build. Remember to take this file with you and we're going to use it again next time or you can use my file of course. So we'll end the main lecture at this point, have a little lab time, and um, we'll do it again next time.